goes there? Relax, Fitzgerald. It's just us. Have any luck? We found some of these pullover frocks and were able to cross the perimeter, but the city is unlike anything I've ever seen. I wish I could say the same. You've been places worse off than this? Not personally, but I have read about them. Unfortunately, this place isn't so different from some places back on Earth. During World War Three? I was thinking further back than that. Medieval times? Not that far. I hope you've been staying out of sight, Fitzgerald. As far as I can tell, why? Let's just say they don't treat the fair sex too well around here. Come to think of it, I haven't seen many women. I don't think they're a lot out of their homes. Avery, have you had any luck in translating the language? I've got a basic linguistic pattern, sir, but I'll need to interact with someone in order to see if it works and to get the dialect mastered. The Universal Translator is working as well as could be expected, though, so we've got that going for us. Where did your group find the robes? There was a clothesline about 80 meters to the east. It's an old trick, but it works. Were there enough of them for the rest of us? No. As it is, sooner or later they'll notice that these are missing. What about uniforms? I've seen a lot of men walking around in what's got to be military garb. We saw the soldiers, too, but the uniform doesn't cover the face, and we couldn't find any that weren't being worn. It seems as though every able-bodied male between 13 and 30 is in the service. And hardly anyone older than that. For all intents and purposes, they conduct themselves as if they're actively at war. Given what I saw aboard the Challenger, they aren't so much making war as they're delivering Armageddon. While it's clear from their ships that they're a warp drive civilization, I'm not quite sure how they got there, given what we've seen so far. Their technological and sociological advancements don't match with normal warp-capable civilizations. It's like they're feudal, maybe bordering on an industrial age, except for their military. All things considered, they probably channeled every discovery they've come up with into munitions making. Brighton here. Did you get a location for us? Not yet, sir. But there's been a new development. What's that? We just detected a major explosion in one of the few cities on the fourth planet. The destruction is massive. Nuclear? No, sir. The explosives were probably standard concussive ordnance, but with tonnage ranging in the tens of thousands. Initial detonation turned four city blocks into a crater. There will probably be massive casualties just from the fallout damage alone. Any sign of how the explosives were delivered? Shortly after the away team landed, a shuttle was launched from the northern hemisphere and flew to the fourth planet. It landed in what became ground zero less than a minute later. Our scans of the shuttle indicate it was manned. Suicide bombers? I believe so. Hang on a second, Wesley. It seems as though someone's going to make an announcement. People of Asabi, People of Asabi. Today, today is a day, is a day, to, day rejoice. to rejoice. Once again, Once again thanks to the courage of our young soldiers, a blow has been blow delivered, has delivered to our sworn enemies. enemies. Our sworn enemies, who strike fear into our children, rape our women, and take what is rightfully ours. Rejoice, my people, and know that we will soon be gods among them. Everyone down! All you dogs, out of your huts. You heard the great Sadaf and Ryan. Get out here, show some gratitude to your ruler. You, old man, if I have to tell you one more time... I'm gonna... Get back here, Mary! Don't do anything stupid! You're not gonna do anyone... Captain! Uh, Captain! He tells me don't do anything stupid. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Fitzgerald to Challenger! Makos, cover fire! Still here, Mary. What's going on down there? Get Cal down to the transporter room and grab the captain. Get him back up there! What? Mary! You know those things aren't safe in large crowds? Neither's a hole in the chest. Get him out of here before he takes on the entire platoon himself. Uh, Captain, get off him. Captain, he's quite unconscious now. He's not Nausicaan after all. Well, he won't. You can quit arguing and beam him up. Now, Avery 2. What? What? Calm down, Matthew. You're fine. Like hell I'm fine. What did you just do? We beamed you aboard. Fitzgerald and Goldman said you were in danger. We just so happened to grab Avery at the same time because he was standing next to you. I'm fine, by the way. Thanks for asking. Of course I was in danger, but so were the rest of them. Send me back. Matthew, calm down. What's going on down there? 
Do you know how dangerous it is to beam two people up at the same time? You could have scrambled our molecules. Our people are in a firefight that I started. By God, if I'm gonna start a fight, I'll be the one to finish it. You started a fight? A firefight? With who? Fine. I give up. I'll just be back here listening if you need me. Soldiers. They were getting ready to open fire on their own people. Right after they launched that suicide attack on... That other planet. You attacked the indigenous population? I attacked a representative of... Ah, the hell with it. Yeah, I attacked a local because he was about to shoot an old man for not moving fast enough. And by the looks of things, he was acting with full consent of their dictator ruler, who encourages young boys to blow themselves up. In large civilian populations. What? The four blocks that were blown up were in the middle of a residential area. The shuttle landed at the local school. If you're trying to calm me down, Cal, you're doing a lousy job. Maybe you should leave the counseling to me. Well, if you're going to lose your mind, you might as well know the full reason why you're going nuts. Oh yeah, definitely you should leave the counseling to me. So, be me back already. Can't. Under orders of Fitzgerald and Goldman. In case you forget, Commander, you outrank both of them, and I outrank you. True, but I'm not about to get on Mary's bad side. Besides, you can do more good here. And how... Wait a second. And the light bulb goes on. Are the phase cannons ready and torpedoes armed? Yes, but I wouldn't recommend opening fire on the planet. Tempting, but no. That would make us no better than they are. Well, that's good to hear. Avery, get up to the bridge and put your translations in the database. I want you to be able to talk to them by the time I get up there. You aren't going there first? I think Westlake would like you to take over. He's none too happy at this point. What else is new? You can cope for a few more minutes. I want to get the rest of the Makos into Shuttlepod 2 to provide the away team with backup. Especially once I have a talk with this Sadapa Prime. Captain, are you sure this is a fight you want to pick? Without a doubt. You got a problem with that, Ensign? No, sir. Just wanted to make sure we were committed. Or should be. Let's get moving, people. We have a world to save. Progress report. Are you really planning on overthrowing the lawful government of this planet? Translations have been downloaded, Captain. Get me the dictator on the horn. Punch a signal through if you have to. I guess I'll take that as a yes. How long has that been going on? About three minutes. It's the other ships in orbit attacking us. Nothing to concern yourself with. Why isn't it doing any more damage? They blew away the Thistlegorm. The Thistlegorm was a cargo ship, not an NX starship, and they weren't prepared. I've got a signal, Captain, with visual. Good. Put him on the view screen. I want to look him in the eye. I don't know who you think you are, you Kumpaknika, progeny of an Ulat, but you have just made a deadly mistake. We will hunt your loved ones down, and you will dread the moment you heard the name of Sabi. You will- You will shut the hell up. I'm Captain Matthew Crichton of the Earth Starfleet Vessel Challenger, and your reign of terror is officially at an end. And for the record, I already dread having heard of your planet, so your work is already done. My fleet will find your Kimpy homeworld, and we will level it beneath our boot heel! You just don't know when to shut up, do you? Listen, buddy, you've already bitten far more trouble than you know, and the more you run your mouth, the deeper you're getting. We will enslave your women and hunt your men for sport! Okay, Big Mouth, take a breath and check in with your fleet on their progress. They'll tell you, unless they're afraid to reveal the truth, that your weapons are useless. Much like yourself. I- I said, shut up. Now, you may be the big fish in this little pond, but you went and crossed the line when you attacked one of our ships and stole weapons. We have no knowledge of what you're talking about. Fine. Lay your way. But the fact of the matter is that those missing weapons led us to your door and drew your activities to my attention. I've never dealt well with bullets. I like to put them in their place. So, here's what you're going to do to keep me happy. You're going to step down from power, and your people will get to hold a free election, and they will get to negotiate for peace. By the little I saw today, they're going to want someone new calling the shots. Someone who won't send people off to blow themselves up. Once we're sure that your planet can play nice with your neighbors, we'll reclaim our stolen weapons and go back about our business. What gives you the right to interfere? By your rules. 
we have the right because we have the bigger guns and we can. Theoretically, we have an obligation because of our advancements to look out for the little guy and make sure there's justice in this universe. But, truth be told, you made my bad day worse. And I can do something about you. 